Hello guys, this week we're going to talk about um, body shell mounting for touring car. It's a subject which can cause a lot of stress and frustration in, in some people, including myself. But today I'm going to show you the tricks that I use to make it as, as hassle-free and, and quick as possible. And how to make it perfect and most importantly the same every time. And I'm going to guide you through the steps. Uh, I'm going to show you how to mount a brand new body shell which hasn't been painted. So a clear body shell. And then later on I'm going to show you how I mount a body shell that's been painted already. So it obviously is not transparent anymore so it makes it a bit trickier. And yeah those are the things we're going to cover today. So sit back and enjoy. So the first step is to to mark the the point, the point for the holes for the body post. So, uh, as I said, this body is brand new, it's transparent, so it's gonna be a lot easier than if it was painted. And this is the extreme twister, by the way. So, the measurement that we use, or at least that I use, to make this the same every time, is the distance from the lower edge of the front windshield to the center of the front body post. And this is a universal measurement that I always try to use to have this completely accurate all the time, you need to make sure that your front body posts are, are straight, that they're not bent in any way. So if you had a big crash, make sure that you change them to, to make sure that they are completely straight. This will make this mounting method more accurate, but in this case, I'm mounting this body shell to be used on asphalt. If you've seen some other uh, posts that I've made recently this year, I've covered the uh, the mounting distance for the twister so for asphalt i've been using a 67 distance here and what we do is we take a sharpie and we try to make uh, marks for 67 for the twister it's fairly easy to make it centered because you have these two ridges here on the hood which serves as uh, uh, reference points. So in this case, we can do the, the marks here. So it's really about millimeter precision when it comes to body shell mounting. So your, your caliper or your vernier, as they say in the UK, is really your best friend. So you always want to keep this handy to make sure that you got this distance perfect. And as you can see, the ridges that I spoke about, they make it quite easy to, to make sure that you've centralized the body shell on the pose. However, to be sure that it's actually centered, what I try to do is, and this takes some practice to get it right, I try to flip this over to see that it's centralized um, between the left and right sides. So you can see that the gap here is similar to the gap here. I think we got it pretty close. So now that the front holes are done, I've used the reamer to perfectly make the holes there. Put it on and make sure it falls down on its own weight that is not binding up on the post. So when the front's down, we move over to the back. And so how do I make the holes for the back now? What I try to do is I try to to look at these lines here at the, the rear trunk to try and centralize the body shell. For the rear body post so I try to eyeball it to make sure that the distance from the body post to this line of the trunk is the same on both sides and to double check it to double check it I usually I get down and I look at the car from the back to check that the position of the wheel 
has the same gap to the body shell on both sides so the body shell is going to be mounted straight and square you don't want it to be mounted at an angle because it will have a negative effect on the aerodynamic in this case so I'm going to mark mark the spot here and then I'm going to use my hoodie reamer to mark to make the holes uh, it's it's a pretty delicate job on these lightweight bodies to not ruin the body when you push the reamer through it because the plastic is so thin that it can, can easily start to tear apart when when you use the dremel uh, when you use the reamer so be very careful not to push it through too quickly or you might tear the body apart and we don't want that it's better to have the body with a little bit too large holes than too tight if it's too tight it's just gonna it's gonna bind up on the post and that might affect the handling negatively so if the holes are slightly too large it's it's actually better than them being too tight. Front lip height and wheel wells is the next step. Uh, this body has been painted up in my trademark fluorescent green color. That's oh, pretty funny actually. The reason why I started painting my body in, in fluorescent green for practice is actually that I know that Masami did it for, for most of his career and I was always impressed with Masami and he was one of my heroes when I was a young young racer. Actually, he still is one of my heroes, but never mind. Uh, fluorescent green it is. So we're going to start measuring the, the height of the front lip. So I'm, I'm going to use a right height gauge. I've covered this way of measuring the, the front height in some of my posts before. So some of you will be familiar with it. But anyway, I'm going to demonstrate it again. So what, what I do is make sure the body is sitting on the car, ready to race. The, the car is set up for racing as well, so the ride height is correct. The front ride height is set. And I use the ride height gauge, I slide it under the body shell here. And the clearance that I'm looking for is 8 millimeters. So it depends on the track and the surface as well, but usually 8 millimeters will give you good clearance and it will prevent the body from dragging on the floor. So if it's touching here, it's a little too low in the center, I'm going to have to raise it up or I'm going to have to trim the, the center of the, the front lip a little bit. When it comes to the wheel wells, I'm going to use a generic tool. Looks like this, which mounts onto the, to the hex and it makes it easier to, to mark out the wheel wells. So what I do is I just cut out a little bit of the of the center of the wheel well to be able to mount this fantastic tool onto the hex or to the outside of the wheel in this case. Use again Sharpie. To mark the cut line for the wheel and this should give you enough clearance depending on the size of of the tool some tools are a little bit bigger some are a bit smaller you simply have to play with it to make sure you have enough clearance this tool right here is actually 64 and a half millimeters so at the widest spot so that's normally good enough to have good clearance so i'm just going to cut this out so as you can see here it's been cut out uh, has decent clearance here for the for the wheel but the finishing touch i'm going to use a protoform sanding drum it's a pretty popular tool that's available 
uh, in hobby shops all over the world and I'm gonna use this to make the final touch to the to the wheel well to get rid of any rough edges make sure you get rid of the, the sharp edge at the end of the wheel well on each side so it doesn't drag the carpet ruins the carpet for example and now you can see the final result is in my mind that's perfect it has enough clearance it's nice and round there's no sharp edges that's exactly how i want it and the front lip is pretty close to where it needs to be as well so when you have a brand new body shell here which is painted uh, it makes it hard to to make the holes for the body post because obviously you cannot see through it so the trick that I use I mean this requires that you have a body shell already with holes made or you can have a template you can cut out the, the inner part of the body to use as a template or you can use a full body shell like I'm going to show you now so you just put the, the painted body shell on top of the the body shell that we just made earlier push this into it so it's as close to as close to the bottom as it can get and then you use the sharpie again to make the holes not to make the holes but to make the marking for the holes try to make it right in the center of of the holes front and rear then you have the problem that the markings are done on the inside but i feel that this is the closest way to make the holes to make the markings for the holes as close to where they need to be as possible so what i then do is i flip it over and I put it against the light. Uh, so you can see here actually, it's gonna be, it's transparent enough to see the mark that I did from the bottom. So then I just, you need, you need a strong light to be able to do this. And if you cannot see it, you just you put it up against the light and you can mostly see the markings that you've done. So I just make a marking on the top. So now I need to measure that uh, the marks that I made are in the right spot so to make it exactly the same as the, the practice body that I made earlier. So then again we, we bust out the caliper and we measure this distance. So here you can see that it's pretty close, 67. 67 as well, so you need to, you might need to adjust this depending on how accurate your marking of the holes were but then just adjust it slightly or when you push the reamer through push it in the direction where the hole needs to be so if it's a little bit off it's if it's half a millimeter uh, to the back just try to adjust it when you when you push the reamer through again in the back you can measure the distance here you can use this distance right here it's 8.8 um, .8. and you can see here that the center of the hole to to the the wing holder is actually 8.8 .8, so it's really close to where I want it to be so you might find yourself in a position where you don't have a template or you don't have an old body shell of the same type that you're trying to mount and if you then on top of everything you only have a painted one you're gonna have a bit of a harder time to mount it so usually then what I do if I'm in that situation I flip it over put a car inside I try to center the car to make sure there's the same gap left and right for both wheels and then I try to look for the position that usually we mount the body forward right so I try to make sure there's enough gap here in the wheel well to, to make sure it's mounted forward enough I then take a sharpie and actually make the markings for the holes from the inside. It's pretty much the only option you have at that point. So then 
you see it's never gonna be perfect but you can see roughly where it needs to be and then you can use the caliper to measure the distance from here to here and you can use it you can use the trick that I shown you earlier you can flip it over mark it from the inside and make the holes that way it's a bit hard to do but you can make it work so be creative take your time don't rush it do it at home in peace and quiet don't don't do it at the track when you're busy and there's stuff going on around you because when you got a beautifully painted body shell like this one here you don't want to you don't want to screw up the holes so take your time and use the caliper more times than you need to to make sure it's right